We came up on a, on a group of bulls. They were quite spread out um, over a couple hundred meters. And we looked at all of them. And one in particular had quite nice ivory. Get ready. I'm not gonna shoot him unless he comes. Huh? I'm not gonna shoot him unless he... No, he's not gonna There are bulls on my right and bulls on my left, and I didn't know if this one, one was turned at me and one was turned away. I didn't know if they were catching our scent from the direction they were at, because we had a basically a half circle on them. And Richard, you know, just he just kept moving along. We would just get up closer and closer to these elephant. We got to the very end of this group of bulls and there was a nice bull and Richard looked at me and said, you know, this is a nice bull and it's your decision if you want to take this bull. He's probably got 39 on the right hand side and maybe 40 on the other, so he's right, right at that 55 mark is what I'm judging him. I could be a little bit off, which will bring him down. He's also very wide. At that point, I had to make the decision of a lifetime. I think I'd be crazy if I passed on him, but I don't, you've been saying, you've been saying the six I mark this whole time. time. It's just a nice thing. It's a major problem. That's your decision. You want to keep looking up? I need to keep looking. It's your fault. I, I think I want to wait. Very good. I was really proud of him. I, I can tell you for a guy that's 23 years old, if that was me over here, um, I would have been hammering him. I, I would have pulled the trigger on him. But Christopher used a lot of uh, discipline and restraint. He knew the kind of bulls that are over here, and uh, he elected uh, to turn the bull down. I know this is this is the last year for Botswana. This is the last year for the biggest elephant in the world. Yeah. And I don't I don't want to take yeah. second best. Did I make a big mistake here? Was this was that the bull I should have taken? You know, I, who knows if we're gonna see more bulls. We can come back in here tomorrow and look around. If we don't see anything here, we're gonna go up to those other trees where the tracker saw those 23 today. So we still got a lot of options here. With Chris passing on the day's bull, the hunters head back to camp with high hopes for a true trophy elephant when the sun rises on the morrow. These roads are absolutely horrible, but you're right in the middle of it. You're, you're within minutes of elephant, you know, left or right at camp. And that's the most enjoyable part of it is you're out here, you're not driving three hours or four hours to where you're gonna hunt every day. And it's just, it's primitive, but it's the real deal. I mean, this is real Africa right here. saw a group of bulls, there was a group of about three. My trackers have tracked these elephant in and we've got up there up to, you know, 200 yards and I couldn't see the elephant still. It's amazing how large an animal can be, but yet you cannot see it. This one, yeah, the one bull from the look that I've got, it looks like he'll be around behind, one in the middle. Yeah. 
it became so evident to me how important the wind is. So what, every time the wind changes, you've got your tracker there, um, just you know, picking it up and Richard telling us, okay, we need to head this direction from the bulls because it's always about being aware of where you are versus where the elephant are and how the wind is blowing. It's quite a nice single dust, this one coming out behind the short one. He's just come out into that open. And we offer a perfect side brain shot. Yeah. Every one of them. A side brain shot. You might want to look at that with your skull. Here he comes now, Brad. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It must be 15 out of it. Yeah. Right. Those more elephants than I've ever seen on all my hunts combined in one group. Mm -hmm. just not. Christopher got to get in on 15 bulls in one group to walk in and get that close, you know. 40 yards and closer on these big bulls. And man, that is something to watch your son or daughter do. It's just, it's incredible. Oh yeah, that's a good one. They're gonna come across. They're gonna go down to water now. If anything happens, we go back to that termite mount. We got into the group of 15 bulls and you know, you're, you're trying to make sure that you're keeping a wind in your favor and that the bulls aren't doing anything odd and you're not catching your wind, you're not spooking them. But when you get in with that many bull elephant and you know they're just gigantic, you kind of your, your head spinning about 360 to make sure that you, you know nothing's coming forward that you don't see. That bull's about 50 pounds. The one with the dark ivory. About 50 pounds. They're great bulls, but none of them were shooters. We just want a little bit of the I'm a little behind. I know I'm behind him, so small. 40? Nah, not even. So like 50 max. Yeah. That's crap. That one tusk probably would go to high, high 50s, maybe 60. All those bulls, if I'd been in Tanzania, I guarantee I'd have been shooting. Uh, up in Tanzania, if you get something in the 40s or 50 pound category, that's just a monster bull up in there. But you know, here in CT7, we've got there's bulls that just are, are just enormous. I think we've got a good spot here. None of these elephants here have spooked. Tomorrow we can come back here. We never know we might find another five different bulls here. It takes a couple of turn downs to get the big one. Um, and I, I think for, for someone his age, a lot of people all they want to do is just shoot and get one down. Whereas Chris was very patient, he, he was willing to wait and hold it out. The sun sets on day two with another very close encounter, but young Chris Sievers is showing patience beyond his years, which often leads to the bull of a lifetime. At this point, all I had all I had known was Richard said the ivory was good, and he was just flapping his ears, and he, all I could tell was that was a big bull, and that this could be it. Just, just watch your feet here, yeah, guys. Watch your feet. Our whole party is walking forward and we're stopping about every, say, 40 yards and really watching the behavior of this bull. And uh, as we walked forward, his ears would stop. We'd stop. His ears would start moving again. We'd advance and go forward.
What's going through my mind at that point is, I cannot have an accident. We cannot have an incident. We can't have a problem. You know, I trust these guys. They're good shots. You know, I've got faith in them. And Richard's standing there too. But you know, it's one thing that we can just do it together as a family. This is it. I mean, this is this is crunch time. We know we have to be ready, we have to be aware, and we have to be ready to shoot. Because that's that's the difference in me being alive and me being dead right now. I have to be ready to shoot this elephant. Do you want sticks? No. You need the sticks? Okay. 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 Just he's gonna keep coming towards us through there. Just wait for him to clear that brush. Okay. Okay. Once he's cleared that brush and he's that there's no brush in the way. We're gonna take him frontal brain, okay? You still you still happy with him? It's gonna be about 50 to 55. That's a good ball. I mean if you're not gonna take him, I'm gonna take him. Your call. I, I wanna take him. Alright. Okay, let's just wait. You, you will come out of the brush. I said to my dad, what do you think about this bull? And he says, if you're not taking this bull, I'm taking this bull. So at that point I knew with my dad's trophy hunting experience on these Botswana bulls, I'm taking this bull. He's my bull and we gotta wait for him to clear that brush. He'll just keep coming towards us. All right, so just wait. Just wait for him, just to relax. Just be little visualize between the eyes, because that's probably where your shot's gonna be. Richard, I can shoot him now. No, you want him to come out of that brush. He needs to come out of that brush. Of course, he'll be nervous because it's the first time he's really been that close to, to an elephant bull. The bull's walking towards us. There's a bit too much brush between us and the elephant that was obstructing his head. And um, you could see Chris was a little bit itchy that he wanted to, to put around through that brush. He knows some things, yeah, he's not quite sure yet. He'll come in and investigate and see what it is. All right, Chris, get ready. He's coming through the brush. Between his eyes. Let's take him. Come up, come up. Good shot, guys. Come up, come up. Let's go. Come around this side. I've seen a lot of people um, with a lot of experience try and do a frontal brain, and, and not many people can do it. It's a very, very difficult shot. When he came out of the brush, we said to him, between his eyes, and Chris smoked him. Woo! Good shot. <laughs> <laughs> Good shooting. You did it, man. Chris. Just watch him, just load another round in there. As a father watching her son come out here and start a dangerous game hunting, it was just unbelievable. I mean, the, the hunt couldn't have gone any better. If you scripted it, you couldn't have had it happen any better. Can you believe the size of them, Chris? I mean, look at I, that. Just, look at the size of their skull and their ear. A good hunt. You know? I mean, this thing is unbelievable. Couldn't, unbelievable. Couldn't be in a better place in the world right now. God. I got to do it. I got to come to Africa. I got to get my bull, my first African animal. I get to share this moment with my dad. This is it. This is the greatest thing you can ever do. I can't believe this is my first African animal. I just can't believe this. <laughs> Nothing like starting on top, Chris. <laughs>